Welcome back. So today uh, we're going to start off with the law of reflection. We have two different types of reflection. We have diffuse reflection, which essentially, uh, if you have a surface that is jagged and rough, like, and I'm simulating it by this jagged uh, surface here. Uh, think of a white screen when you go, you know, when you go to watch a movie theater or in your classroom or something where you have a white surface to project uh, images on. It's usually not super smooth because if it's going to be smooth, then you're going to have light reflecting off it in a very specific direction. You don't want that. You want incoming light that is parallel and you want it bouncing off of it in different directions. So that's called diffuse. And the reason why you want it bouncing off in different directions is because you want everybody in the room to be able to see the image. Now obviously here I only have three rays. These are the incoming. I didn't draw the incoming here. But essentially, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the direction of the reflected ray. It's all at random, and that's what you want in that case, and that's called diffuse reflection. On the other hand, regular reflection is more uh, consistent. So in order to understand this, this, let's say, we could say, we could give this an example. We could say the previous one was like a, a white screen. And this one, on the other hand, we could say it would be a mirror. Now, when we have incoming rays here, like this, now there's a name for this guy, and this guy is now called the incident ray. Okay, And in order to understand which direction the reflected ray, after all this is the law of reflection, we're going to change colors here. And I'm going to draw what's called a normal. And I'm doing this in red. And that is the normal. And in mathematics, normal means perpendicular. And that dotted red line is indeed perpendicular to the mirror. Let's change back to our regular color. And now when we have the reflected ray, now what we know is change colors yet again what I know is that this angle here is called theta I and this angle here and both of these angles are measured towards the normal and that's theta R and the law of reflection states that theta I is equal to theta r. That's the law of reflection. So those two angles are equal for regular reflection. For diffuse it's just random directions and there's no rhyme or reason to it and that's as I said earlier there's a specific use case for that. You would never want to project a film onto a mirror because then no one's going to be able to see it in the room. For that you'd need a white screen. But this also has a very specific uh, use and we'll come to see that in a minute. However, this law of regular reflection has many important uh, applications. Let's move on. 
All right, so I've wrote down some notes here on our next uh, topic, and that's called refraction. Please don't mix up the terms refraction and reflection. Reflection, we just finished. Now this is a different word, refraction. So I put down uh, my definition for it here. It's, I said refraction is when waves, for example light, change direction or bend when passing obliquely through a boundary between different transparent media. Notice I said the word obliquely, uh, and I put down here not perpendicular, not perpendicularly. Let's give an example of this. So let's say, for example, if I have here, let's say I have air, and here I have uh, glass. Okay. Now you're probably watching this. You're in a room that has windows, and light can travel through windows. And when it does, <clears throat> the light, let's say for example, it's coming from the air. So we'll draw a light ray coming from the air, and there's glass on the right hand side there. Okay, I tried to draw that again to make the, the boundary uh, a little bit more vertically straight. So this here is my incident ray. And if it did not change directions, then it would go through straight like this. But it does change directions. We have to figure out which direction it bends towards. Now before I continue here, let's actually draw the, uh, the, the normal here. So I'll draw the normal like this. That normal is perpendicular to the boundary. And this is the boundary. That's the boundary between the glass and the air. So this left side's the air, the right hand side is the glass. Now in order for us to know which direction it bends, I'm going to give us two memorization techniques. The first one is called SFAN. And what that stands for is slow to fast is, or I should say instead of just is, let's go bends away from the normal. Okay? And the other one is FSTN. And there's the, so the, the, that's the memorization word, super. I, I call it super fan. Like for example, if you're a fan of some sports, like Messi or some superstar, then you could say, uh, I am a super fan of whatever sports team or sports character. And then the other thing is, and then you could say, I watch them on FSTN, the, 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 the Fabulous Sports Television Network, or the Fantastic Sports Television Network. And that's, I watch it because I am a super fan. These are just memorization techniques, but what they really stand for is fast to slow bends towards normal. So again, the letters F, S, T, N. Okay? So now the question we need to ask ourselves is, which situation is this here 
with the light going. This, this arrow here is extremely important because it's telling us the direction the light is traveling. It's traveling from the air to the glass. Now, in order to do this, what we need are indices of refraction. So if you, if you look these up, they're in a table provided for you. Uh, or you could just, you know, Google some common indices of refraction. But specifically, I will give you N air is equal to 1.0003. And N, at least, uh, I think is it quartz glass, is 1.52. Now the N is the index of refraction. It has no units, okay? No units. It is simply a, a ratio or a number. Where does it come from? Well, let's push this up a little bit here and let's see if we can come to a definition of index of refraction. Okay, so I've put down this equation here, the index of refraction. What is it? Well, it's this equation here. It's just a ratio of speeds where C is the speed of light in a vacuum, which, by the way, happens to be uh, here. Let's put it over here, maybe. I can pull this back. It's 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, although you don't need to know this. Uh, but it's just kind of handy to put it in there. And then the other thing to know is that Vm is the speed of light in the medium. So now if you think about it, let's say, for example, if the medium is a vacuum, then N is just going to be C divided by C, which is equal to 1.0. So for a vacuum, N equals 1.0. Now, notice, as the denominator here, the velocity of light, as it gets smaller or slower in different media, then this number becomes bigger. So I'll say that mathematically. As the denominator gets, as the denominator gets bigger, the quotient becomes, uh, no, hold on, let me back that up. Let me say that again, I, I messed that up. Okay, so the reason why I messed that up is because the velocity of the medium can never exceed the speed of light. The speed of light is the fastest speed in a vacuum is three times 10 to the power of eight. So let's, let's change that. As the velocity in the medium gets slower or smaller, the quotient becomes bigger. So that means slower media have larger index of refractions. Example of that I'll give you is a diamond. Light is extremely slow in a diamond. Diamond has an index of refraction of uh, 2.42. So that means that if N of a diamond is equal to 2.42, that means the velocity of light in a diamond is less than half of what it is in a vacuum, right? Because, like, think of it this way. Easy numbers to try and think about here is, let's say, for example, if the speed of light is, let's just use a simple number. Let's say it's 10. 10 divided by what equals 2? Forget the 0.42. Well, obviously, it, this has got to be 5. So now you can see here that that means the speed of light in a diamond, if it was 2, would have to be half the speed of light in a vacuum, right?
but since it's more than two that means the speed of light in a diamond is even slower so that's where the, that's kind of what the index of refraction is now if we look this up over here and we know that glass has an index of refraction of 1.52 and we know air has an index of refraction of 1.003 now what we can determine is which one of these two media is the fast one and which one is the slow one well obviously and you'll get really used to this the one with the bigger index of refraction is the slow one right the bigger this number the bigger the index of refraction the slower the speed of light so therefore we can write here slow and therefore we know since this is a this is closer to 1.0 we know this is fast now we know the direction it's traveling right we know that it's going from air to glass so therefore we know that we're going from fast to slow now if we look at these two uh, memory memorization techniques we know that we're going from fast to slow therefore it is fs t n from fast to slow that means we are bending towards the normal so this dotted line is if there was no refraction that means if we bend towards the normal and this red dotted line is the normal that means our direction is going to go like that we're bending towards the normal not away from it now we'll, we're going to get to the angles in a second but let's do one more example of this and um let's see if we can figure out this one and I'll, I'll even change orientation here I'll, I'll draw my back this is my boundary okay and then I'll have my uh, let me draw that again okay there's my incident ray. Oh, by the way, what I forgot to write on this drawing up here, let me do this in, uh, let's say, another color, is this is my angle of incidence. That's to the normal. And this is my angle of refraction. It's also to the normal. Okay. Let me do this now again over here. And my in, th now the two media are going to change. I'm going to make this one water. And I'm going to make this one air. So for example, let's say you have a scuba diver under the water and they're shining a laser or a flashlight up towards the surface of the water. And this is outside in the air. Well, which direction does the light bend? So in order to figure this one out, we again, we have to draw our normal. So that's the normal. And now we have to decide which one is fast and which one is slow. Again, I know that water has an index of refraction of 1.33, and I know air has an index of refraction of 1.0003. I know that this is the bigger index of refraction. 1.33 is bigger, so this must be the slow medium, and this, therefore, is the fast one. Now, I'm going from slow to fast. And if I look up here, slow to fast is SFAN, or superfan. That means it bends away from the normal. Now, here is my dotted line to represent 
I didn't really draw that perfectly straight, but you can see that would be the line that would represent no bending or no refraction. But superfan or SFAN is away from the normal. So that means my refracted ray is not going to be up here. That would be towards, no, it's going to be away from the normal. And that's the direction it travels. So if you think about it, uh, you could think of it as here's the normal, and so here is the, let me see if I can put my hand in the right direction here. Uh, there is the angle, and now it bends down even further, right? So it's like this initially, and then it bends down away from the normal. Okay? So at this point, I can say that my angles are change colors to 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 the normal here is my incident angle and then on the refracted side here is my refracted angle okay now the question is how do I calculate these angles? Now that I know which way it bends, according to these guys here, now that I know which way it bends, right? I, my image was kind of blocking that for a minute. Uh, that's away from the normal first one, and towards the normal is FSTN. Now that I know which way they're bending, how would I calculate the values. So if I move this over here, now I'm going to show you, oop, let's change colors again. Oops. Um, let's try black again. And let's type in here, Snell's Law. Snell's Law is a very easy equation to memorize. And uh, let's just go like this. We can see the whole thing. There. Essentially, it states that Ni sine theta i is equal to Nr sine theta r. There it is. So it's a very easy mem equation to memorize. It's just n sine, n times sine. n times sine equals n times sine. So very straightforward, nothing really complicated. It's just on the left side you have incident, incident, and on the right you have refracted, refracted. So let me, let me you know, create some fictitious angle here. Let me say that in this example here, theta i is 36 degrees. Okay, so we'll say if theta i is 36, find theta r. In other words, what is that angle there? Question mark. So in order to do this, we have to solve in this equation for theta r, that guy right there. So I'll divide both sides by nr, and I'll get ni sine theta i divided by nr equals sine theta i, or sorry, r. There you go. Now I have sine theta r, but I don't have theta r. Now I'll leave it there because if I, if I take the inverse sine of this thing, it looks kind of, I think, uh, syntactically ugly. So let me put in my values. I know that for the incident side, my ni is 1.003. I know that from here. I know that nr is equal to 1.52. I know that from here. Okay? And I also know, 
I'm given this guy here. My incident angle is 36 degrees. So let me put these values in. So I'll start just writing this equation out here. Okay. I'll just say I, I don't want to put a box around that because that's not an equation you want to memorize. Okay. I'm just going to rewrite it here. So ni is 1.0003 times sine 36 divided by 1.52. And now when I get that value, I get I get 0 point approximately 387. Now that's not the angle. That's equal to sine theta r. So to get theta r, I need to take the inverse sine of that. Right? It's equal to inverse sine of 0.387. So Take your calculator and go inverse sine, and we get an angle of we get an, an angle of 22.7 degrees. Try that on your calculator and verify that you're able to get that answer. So now I know that if this is 36, then this theta r must equal 22.7 degrees. Okay. So let's try it another time. Let's try it one more time. But this time, let's try it for the other one down here. OK? Notice, I want you to notice something. Um, notice that theta r is smaller than theta i. OK? Remember, don't get confused with where I'm measuring to. Remember, this black line here going vertically is the boundary. This dotted li red line is the normal. It's always to the normal. Okay, So the refracted ray to the normal is it's closer to the normal than the incident ray was. Okay, Because this situation here was fast to slow. So I'll put it here. I'll say in maybe a different color, uh, this was FSTN. Okay. On the other hand, this down here, this was an example of superfan. And notice, just by looking at it, you can tell that theta r in this case is bigger than theta i. So. Let me give us, let's, let's take an example for example, like, uh, let's try an angle of, again, let's try 36 for theta i. Maybe let's be consistent. Let's see what, what it works out to. Okay? So maybe we'll move this up here, make sure we can see everything. We'll put a line, and we'll say for this situation here, this guy is 36 degrees. So we have to be careful, and we'll learn this in the next lesson. There are certain angles we can't use here, and we'll learn that in the, in the next lesson. But I think 36 will be OK. So now we write Snell's law again, ni sine theta i is equal to nr sine theta r. Now, you might say to yourself, well, if we're using the same equation, aren't we going to get the same answer? No, we're not. Why? Well, because look here. In this case, our ni is we're going from water to air. So that means our ni is 1.33. And our nr, in this case, is 1.0003. OK? So again, let's solve for theta r. Find theta r. Therefore, we'll take this equation and algebraically manipulate it. And we'll go ni sine theta i 
divided by, let's divide both sides by nr, and we'll get sine theta r. Now let's put our numbers in. 1.33 times sine 36 divided by nr, which is 1.0003. And that's going to give us, that gives me an answer of 0 0.781. Now, that means that's equal to sine theta r. Therefore, I could say theta r is equal to inverse sine of 0 0.781. And that's going to give me, I go inverse sine on my calculator, and I get 51.4 degrees. Notice, so now I know what this guy is. This guy up here is 51.4 degrees. Notice here that 51.4 is bigger than 36. Notice before, 22.7 was smaller than 36. Okay, This is the difference between FSTN going from fast to slow versus going from slow to fast. Oops. OK? So now you've seen a couple of different examples of using Snell's law to calculate the refracted angle and how the math works out. It's very straightforward. All right, see you guys next time.